YouTube, it's Faye, and um, behind me, you can see Vice, my perfectly painted ice blue metallic Supra. Actually, paint just got laid on her uh, two nights ago now, and as you can see, the color is absolutely perfect. The clear is so glossy, and I'm just beside myself with joy. I'm actually over here. No, just kidding. Um, that was terrible. But uh, for today's video, I really wanted to show you some of the behind the scenes because coming from the mechanical side of things, I didn't really understand what mixing color was all about. I thought, well, gee, I, I have the paint coat off the VIN. It's 8G2, Ice Blue Pearl is actually what the Toyota dealership called it. And I assumed you just bought it off the shelf and it didn't matter necessarily where it came from. It was always going to be the same. And if there's any variance, I sort of thought that the blame was to be placed on the person who did the painting, you did a crappy job, whatever, and I had no idea that there are so many things that could possibly go wrong. So this is absolutely an art, and so I'm so excited to show this to you guys. I think you're gonna learn a lot, and I, I think you're gonna really dig this video. So let's hop, let's hop right into it and talk about how Rick painted this car, 8G2, so perfectly and match the original color to a T. Right, we're gonna look up the formula for Faye's car, 1989 Toyota Supra. We're gonna use BASF because they've got the best documentation, I think, for a lot of older cars. So here's how we do it. Click on the formula. We do have the code on this car because Faye knew it. Names are something that change periodically, so names are really not that accurate. And I know that the name of this color was supposed to be Ice Blue Pearl, pearl. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Pearl is kind of a newer term, so I was kind of you know, thinking that that wasn't going to work. And sure enough, what's coming up here? Now, there's a lot of crossovers with color codes, as you can see right here. We pulled up AG2. We didn't get specific with manufacturer and year and all that stuff. So it's going to pull up everything with an 8G2 somewhere in that original code. Whoa. And what we're seeing right here is really cool because that's a General Motors. Yeah. And that's a light blue metallic. That could easily be mistaken for the Toyota thing. And Subaru? A Subaru. Yeah, there's a Subaru here that somebody did something funny with. <laughs> and, well, maybe they copied a color from Toyota or something. I don't know. And then the one that makes the most sense is the third option down here, the Toyota. So we're going to go with that one. You can double check, make sure you're in the range by looking at the year span. Yeah. And a lot of paint companies are not that good at that. I, I know Matrix was especially horrible at that. They would just randomly put some years in there. And it wasn't, very, it wasn't a very good way of narrowing down the search. BASF, it's another reason we're in here. It's, it's reliable. So we're going to go over here, and I don't have all the rest of these paint lines here. These are all under the umbrella of BASF. But what we do have is Daimon. So we click on that guy. We come over here, and that's giving me the standard color, the way that color was originally when Toyota decided to put it on the car. That's the first one. And then you can see here a darker red, lighter, dirtier in red. <laughs> So hmm, what's dirtier in red? What? So I can explain all this, and, and this will probably shed some light on some of you guys that paint cars uh, and, and why you have to go through what you have to go through. When we paint a car at a body shop, we're actually held to a higher standard than the OEM. And what I mean by that is you wouldn't have variances on this HG2 unless the factory screwed it up. And it was getting monitored periodically out in the field. Body shops were complaining, hey, wait a minute, man. I mixed that color right on the money and it didn't match. So how does this happen? Well, as it relates to the darker right here, I promise you that they painted some of these blue cars. They put them out at all the dealers across the country. And then they went into, let's say, black or something darker, right? And then they have to come out of that because the dealerships are going, no, we want more of that, that 8G2, the light blue metallic. That's what people want. So they go from the darker color back into the blue. They don't purge their mile-long system of plumbing and stuff quite adequate. And now they've got a variance to the darker side. Same thing mm -hmm. happens to the red here, to the lighter, to the dirtier in red. So that is all variances of the of the 8G2. So when it says dirtier in red, 
Yeah, it's a combination. Of, they they came from the darker, and then they went to red, and then they went back to the blue. Now it's dirtier and red. <laughs> <laughs> so there could be red and black in the paint. Then. Yes, and they progressively got dirtier. Now nobody would notice that out at the dealership. They just sold the blue ones, right? Yeah. You wouldn't notice it until you came to a body shop, and you, let's say you had to replace a fender, um, and what the hell's going on? It doesn't match the rest of it. And for that reason. That's why we blend. That's exactly why we blend. There's other things that factor into that. You could have the exact same can of paint that these people painted that car with. You could put it on there several years later. And now that you've got sun fade and right. you know differences in weather temperature and reduction and gun you know habits and whatnot, you can still make the color change. So that's why it is what it is, and that's why you blend into adjacent panels. What I would normally do here is I would go over to these color tool references over here. Mm -hmm. And what these are, these are um, color books. Well, maybe we should just take them back and, and see what the color books are. I've, yeah. I've, I've written them down right here. Because what I want to do is I want to have a visual of this color the way it was mixed and sprayed out by the factory. I will take that color to Faye's car and I'll find out who did what. Which one of these variants is going to be on there, right? Uh, it's probably going to be dirtier and red. No. <laughs> so these are chromatic. These are organized by shade, which is different than some paint manufacturers. Uh, a lot of paint manufacturers will organize these things by OEM code which in my opinion gets really convoluted and really it's stupid. You have to go through so much just to find it. So I like this setup. It's another reason we're using BASF. So MB008.50, 0016, 15, 009, 008.75, 0.68, 0.65, 007.00. Okay, I already did this once. We're just redoing it for the, the, the camera right here, right? In other words, all that shit that's on that database is not in this system. Right. And yeah, I, you can't have every color possible in stock, right? I mean, that'd be... Yes, and it's an old infinite. car, and what they've done, you'd have so many more of these books, or it'd be, you know, 10 inches thick by now. What they've done is they've purged a lot of the older stuff out of this chip selector set. Okay. So I don't have any of them. I've, I've looked for every one of them. Oh, no. Oh, I no. Know. I know. That's the bad <laughs> That's the oh. bad news. So what do you do when that happens? Because this is going to happen to a lot of people, especially on these old cars, right? Well, I'll show you. What I've done here is I went back to the standard, and then I go in here as we've got it defaulted on one pint. That's just what we do a lot of around here. So I'm going to change this to one ounce, right? Oh. And then I printed it out, and I won't print it again because I've already done that, and it's back there. So I'm going to go back to the what, back. What is flop control? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so flop control, that uh, there's, there's two ways of looking at the paint, at the car. There's a face position, and that's a straight-on position, and then there's an angular look at it, and that's called the flop. Oh! And so you can lighten the flop, you can darken the flop, you can have it the same as the face, and that flop control stuff yep. that goes in there, that's what will actually lighten the flop. That's also a suspending agent, and so it's strange because different paint companies will call that, there'll be flop adjusters on other you know paint lines, and then there'll be flattening additives on paint lines. And for whatever reason, BASF is calling this a flop control. And it, it does do that. And what it actually really does, and I would personally call it what it's what it really is, it's a suspending additive. Okay. And you, what it does is it's suspending some of these, the iridescent here. That's, right. That's fine aluminum, and you've got a medium aluminum. So... That's why this is not a pearl color, because there's technically no pearl making this thing up. It's it's actual old-fashioned aluminum. Whoa. Metallic. It's like mostly that medium aluminum. Yes. And so you learn these things along the way. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I, I did learn it little by little, because I noticed many, many years ago working with the Matrix system that every time you had some sort of a pearl or ground glass effect or even the aluminum in a mix you always had this suspending agent with, that they're calling a flop control. And depending on how much you had in there, it actually lifts it up, it suspends it. It'll hold it up off of the base color, or it'll be down in the base color. 
Now, oh. when it's down in the base color, it's flat. It's part of the mix, and it's the same level as that. You don't have a lighter flop. That's okay. what gives you a same face and a flop, right? The more it comes up, the more flop you're going to have because it's it's high enough in there where it's allowing light to travel behind it and make it look different. Interesting. So that's not part of the clear coat. That's actually part of the, the paint itself, or is this a single stage? No, this is base coat, clear coat. Base so that's coat actually, and clear coat. Yeah, it's part of the base. And one of the things that really got the cat out of the bag for me, it was uh, Matrix calling it a flattening additive. I'm thinking like, okay, well that doesn't make a lot of sense because base coat is flat. When it flashes off, it's flat. There's no gloss to it until you put the clear coat on, right? Yeah. So I knew there was some bullshit going on. Right <laughs> <then>. <laughs> and, and it was a PPG guy that actually, I don't know that he meant to tell me, but he did. Um, he's the one that nailed it as the uh, suspending agent. So, so I've been kind of trying to use that term ever since. And you guys just learned something. What I've got here is a one ounce formula. And I've already gotten quite a bit done. I've already gotten to this point right here where I just put the two tenths of a gram of the 250 in. And now I've got some blue here, BC 400. I gotta put 1.4 grams. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. Oh, okay, so we're, we're measuring stuff. That explains the mad scientist outfit today. That's it. Look at it, he's got his glasses on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've got the I'm lab coat. Man. Yeah, oh, you're looking <laughs> you're looking like someone I can trust now. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what nobody in the business does. I mean, that's why the paint spot's got a good reputation for, you know, getting the right color. We go out of our way to do that. Okay, so I got the right amount in there, now I need BC840. Whoa! Perfection matters. All right, now we're gonna get a spray out card, metal spray out cards, because it matters. Do they come in not metal? Yeah, you know, most people use paper. And substrate matters. You can look at any of these new cars rolling down the road and you see that the bumper covers never happen to match the fenders. Or the yeah, uh-huh. That's a substrate issue. So if you're gonna be painting bumpers, yeah, use plastic spray out cars. And they do make them, right? If you're gonna be painting metal car bodies, use metal. Oh. And so I'm not doing a full blown spray out on this. I do them a lot. But at this stage of the game, all I need to do is tap it out, kind of like what I've done to that old General Motors color there. And if you notice, they've got a black line running down the middle. Yeah, what's that? The way you figure out how much color to put on a car is you spray it exactly the way you would a car. You know, gun distance, reduction, speed, the whole nine yards, and flash time. And you put one coat on, wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, put another coat on. When you can no longer see the transition between black and white, that's how many coats it takes that particular color to reach its threshold. So to just arbitrarily say, well, I always put three coats on a car, and I always put two and a half or whatever, it's, it's bullshit. And the cheaper the paint you use, like let's just say... Omni? Yeah, let's just say Omni, right? <laughs> Omni is so watered down, it's, it's going to take you twice as many coats to, to reach its threshold. Either that, or you don't know all this, and you just paint the car and do what you think you need to do. And it's a spotted mess when you get it out in the sunlight. Yeah, that's how that happens. So you're better off going with the number one. Don't chintz if, if it matters. If you're just going to get rid of the car, yeah, just do whatever you want. Let it become somebody else's problem, right? So this is a really good cover oh, color. Wow, it's so beautiful. Yeah. I'm putting some around the hole here because what we're going to do with this, we just created the visual that we did not have over there in the chip cabinet. So this becomes a standard. And I'll be able to tell by putting this up to the car where to go from here based on the verbiage that's on the database. Dirtier, redder, lighter, right? Whoa! So we'll go downstairs now and we'll hold that up there where that hole is and that's gonna make it easy to figure out where we're at. So hats off to the guy that did do this car. He, the color is right. Wow! You, are you seeing right in that circle there? Yep. There's also a trick for the guy that does this. You can make a little cylinder, you know, in your, with your fingers and your hand, and that blocks out all the peripheral stuff. There's a lot of other stuff going on around here, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you can focus better on that transition. I bet it's hard with the metallics, too. Well, it is. Um, sometimes there's a, an issue. Right now, I'm just going for color, because everything, if the color is right, it, 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 the metallic will fall in place, right? So sometimes there is an issue and you want to make sure that, let's say we're creating the color. 
well, okay, well, what's the size of metallic? Now, we know from the formula there was a fine and a medium in there, right? We could also yes. confirm that with a glass. If we're just making it from scratch, we don't have any of this documentation, we can figure that out by looking at it with a magnifying glass and seeing what the size of the flake is. So this is the inside of the door, which obviously has not been painted before. This is the original color, so now we're comparing it to the original color. That's pretty close. Yep. Wow. Yeah, and it's actually, there, there's going to be a little bit of difference. I mean, if you were to look at it, you know, under a magnifying glass, because this is not going to be base coat, clear coat. Right, right, right. There's no clear coat on that at all, right? It's yeah. just... So that would look a little bit different under that right, glass. It's really but close. The, the color's right on the money, I think. Ah, uh, yeah! Somebody did a good job, yeah. So, all right, so now we know that the standard color is the right color, so now we're going to mix up a larger quantity of that. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I know you learned something and now maybe you have what you need for the next time that you go and get either an entire car or a piece of your car painted and hopefully you are able to get it to match as perfectly as I was. And I also want to give a huge thanks to Rick Ciotti of The Paint Spot. If you want to know where you can find him, where to buy paint from him, where to you know pick his brain a little bit more, I will link all of his information in the description below. He does have a YouTube channel. He doesn't upload very often, um, but he's got some good videos on there. So go ahead and check him out. Give him some support. And uh, yeah, support The Paint Spot if you are in the San Antonio area. So um, thank you so much. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, as you can see the car is not complete there's still a lot more to do a lot more to paint uh, so I better get back to that see you in my next video bye